Hi, this is Tim Carr. We're back at the National Conference for Media Reform, and I'm here with Marjorie Cohn, who is a professor of law at the Thomas Jefferson School of Law, and she's just now uh, working on a book uh, dealing with drones and international law. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about drones lately, Marjorie. Uh, what is it uh, that you want to, to uh, write about? What are you working on in, in regard to the proliferation of drones worldwide? Well, the reason we've been hearing a lot about drones is because of the leak of the white paper and then Rand Paul's filibuster, which really just focused on the killing of U.S. citizens on U.S. soil, and that's why people are so upset. Oh, there has to be a court to, to regulate it. Um, but when this recent Gallup poll shows that when Americans are asked about killing people who are not American citizens on foreign soil who are suspected terrorists, almost two-thirds of them say, well, that's fine. And there's a lot of racism involved there, mm -hmm. um, that U.S. lives are, of course, more valuable than, uh, than non-American mm -hmm. lives. And when people think about Americans, they don't think about people who look like Awalaki right. or his son. They think about white Americans. So, so, so drones really only become a relevant issue for many Americans when, it, when it's applied in a local scenario. The, the, the use of drones, which I understand have been going on for quite some time, places like Pakistan and Afghanistan have, have, have uh, hit much lower on the, the radar of public perception in the United States? Yes, and because of the incredible secrecy surrounding this drone program, mm -hmm. we don't know how many people have been killed. Mm -hmm. But Lindsey Graham's figure is 4,700, and less than 2% of those are high-level Taliban people the rest are civilians and yet this is not on the the radar screen so my book is an interdisciplinary anthology where we're looking at different aspects of this drone war not just drones but targeted killing with um, snipers with bombing the targeted killing can take place uh, not not just with drones although drones is the most dramatic um, manifestation of it and certainly we're now thinking about drones being used in the United States to, to, to surveil people and police people. Um, but the illegality of defining the whole world as a battlefield and then saying that the president can create a list right. and, and take out people who are suspected of being terrorists or militants without any due process, without an arrest, without trial, and even um, signature strikes, which means that he doesn't even have to have the name of a person. It's an area where there might be suspicious activity and kill people there, many of whom, most of whom are civilians, is very, very alarming. So um, there are legal issues. There are also political issues, the blowback right. against the United States, and even people like General McChrystal, other generals, foreign policy experts, former diplomats, are now saying, this is not a good idea. It makes people hate us more, not less. So you, met, you brought up the legal issues. I mean, the technology has always presented challenges to both domestic and international law, and this is clearly a new technology. Is there any precedent in law that can be applied to protecting citizens' rights, to protecting the rights of people at a time when drones are proliferating? Well, the technology is, is neutral. It's a question of how it's used and mm -hmm. who, who uses it. I mean, there can be, of course, good uh, good uses of, for drones. They can do surveil things that have to do with the environment. But when they're used to kill people, to uh, surveil people who are organizing and concerted activity in this country, for example, used by the police, then it is very, very disturbing. Um, so. The, with, the, with the proliferation of the technology, we don't have rules. There are no mm -hmm. rules for the use of drones. So w we've got to think about how those rules are going to be formulated and what role independent media um, can play in that conversation. Sure, and, and you've talked a bit, little bit about independent media here. Obviously, we're here at the National Conference for Media Reform, which is a conference about advocacy and action and supporting independent media. What is the role that advocates or independent media groups can play in helping support the work that you're doing uh, to address this problem? Well, we're already doing a lot of this work in, in a really important way, and independent journalists and anti-war activists have been talking for a long time about these drones. It is now just permeating into the national consciousness. But when you think about, for example, the effect of cable news, um, there are 
they're less than one percent of the uh, less than one percent of the viewing audience watch cable stations. So, for example, Rachel Maddow is not going to have the influence that Walter Cronkite had during sure. Vietnam. There were three um, three networks during Vietnam. Walter Cronkite after the Tet Offensive. Um, where the National Liberation Front took over uh, two-thirds of the country mm -hmm. and when that was reported American public realized that that the war could not be won. Walter Cronkite went to Vietnam and said it's a stalemate and uh, and then people really started the media um, started agreeing and of course the anti-war movement was uh, was right. was he heating up in, we, in a we big way. We live in an era where network news no longer dominates the agenda, at least not as much as it used to, given the proliferation of independent media. So you say there's a role uh, in, uh, for independent media to be, be a countervoice to some of the things that we're hearing in the mainstream press about this issue, to bring these issues to light in ways that may not be covered by a more institutional press? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you look around here, there are thousands of people who are involved in right. TV, radio, yeah. websites um, that are bringing this kind of information. The problem is that many times we're preaching to the choir and the challenge for us is how to penetrate the national consciousness, how to get that information out, not just to people on the left, but to the society as a whole. And that does happen. Um, that happens when, for example, uh, you write on Huffington Post and the New York Times might quote you. Sure. Um, but it needs to happen a lot more. We need to get out there and, uh, and, and really um, get ourselves and our issues on the national agenda. Um, and, and we're doing that more and, and are more. there any opportunities in the political landscape? Are there any members of Congress who are working on policies that might be helpful in this regard, too? Um, yes, well, we have, you know, Bernie Sanders, of course, who is wonderful, and we have some progressive congresspersons, but, you know, Congress is, uh, is, is really paralyzed. I mean, it, you know, it, it's, it's very, very difficult to really see any progress. Um, and, and, you know, the leadership coming from the White House is also equally uh, discouraging. So there, there are just so many things when you see, when you have uh, the president talking about how much we're going to cut Social Security, not whether we should cut Social right. Security, and yet not really, ma maybe tiny cuts in the military budget, but not making a dent in the trillions of dollars that are used for useless wars, unnecessary wars, illegal wars, um, and in enriching defense contracts. Actors, um, but not really insisting that, uh, that that rich people pay more taxes mm. and that we cut the defense budget so that we don't have to cut entitlements for people, um, which is the last thing that we should be cutting. So, so Marjorie, how can people find out more about your book? Is there is there a website that they can go to, or is there is there some way you can? we can draw more attention to your efforts? The, yeah, the book is in process now. Mm -hmm. um, my website, MarjorieCohn.com, refers to, has actually links to my other books, um, which cover a lot of these issues, torture, the illegality of, of wars of aggression, resistance in the military, um, and my articles are listed on my website, MarjorieCohn.com. So, so to learn more, go to MarjorieCohn.com, a really important topic. Um, and that's it for now from the National Conference of Media Reform. I'm Tim Carr.